week I'm in the mood for something acoustic. It's been ages since I looked at any acoustic music. So what I'm going to do is look at one of my favourite country blues fingerstyle pieces. It's a piece of music that usually goes by the name of Vestapol or Vastapol. Now Vestapol is actually quite a mysterious piece of music. It's a piece that everybody seems to play slightly differently and nobody seems quite sure of its origins. And to add to the confusion, Vestapol is also a term used for the particular open tuning found in this piece, which is open D tuning. And some people call open D tuning Vestapol tuning. So I've done some extensive research, which involved spending about 10 minutes on the internet. And the origins of this piece of music seem to go back to mid 19th century Russia and the city of Sebastopol. And then somehow the piece made its way over to the US where it was popular as part of the late 19th century parlor guitar craze, which is not something I know very much about. And then somehow the piece made its way into the hands of the early folk and country blues musicians. Now Vestapol is a fingerstyle standard, but one of the problems of learning this particular piece is that there's no fixed version of it and you just have to listen to some of the famous recordings of Vestapol or to go online and to hear some people play it and they'll all be doing things slightly differently although there are I think some common threads running through those different versions. Now my arrangement of this tune which I'm going to show you today cobbles together various bits from my favourite versions so I first learned this from one of my teachers many years ago now so there are bits of that in there and I've also got bits taken from some of my favorite recordings of the tune. There are a few little touches of my own in there as well. Now as far as famous recordings that you might like to check out you certainly want to have a listen to the Elizabeth Cotton version of this tune. Also I think the Stefan Grossman recording of this tune is quite an important one. He seems to have come up with a, a near definitive arrangement of it so certainly check that one out. Uh, you also hear bits of Vestapol in lots of the great country blues and fingerstyle players. You can certainly hear Vestapol in some Mississippi John Hurt tunes and for me it's very reminiscent of the John Fahey piece Poor Boy A Long Ways From Home. Now in this lesson I'm going to try and give you an approachable playable version of this tune. It's not for total beginners but I think if you've got just a little bit of fingerstyle experience you shouldn't find anything too difficult here and what I'd suggest is learning it note for note as I show it to you to start with but it's certainly the kind of piece that once you've got the basics together you're going to be able to improvise within its structure and do things your own way slightly. Let's start by talking about open D or Vestapol tuning and I'm going to show you how to get into open D tuning from standard tuning. Now basically we want all of our open strings to sound like the notes in a D chord and I think a little bit of music theory might help here. The notes in a D chord are actually D, F sharp and A so we want our open strings to be those notes. Now some people when they think about open D tuning you might think about an open D chord like this um, and in this case it's not exactly helpful because we're not tuning our strings to sound like this particular voicing of the chord. The way that I think of it it's more like this D chord here which is a D major bar chord up at the 10th fret. Those are the notes we're going to tune our open strings to except everything's going to be an octave lower. So if you look at the notes in this chord we've got D, A, D, F sharp, another A and then another D. So we're going to make our open strings sound like those notes. Now the way I do it is this, I'm going to start by tuning the low E string down to a D and the easy way to do that, we've already got a D note here which is the fourth string and I'm just going to tune the low E string down till it matches something like that, we can fine tune this in, in a moment but now our low E string has become a D the, the fifth string, the A string, that can stay the same, that's in a D chord and the fourth string can also sound the same, so we've got D, A, D. Now what I would do next is probably tune the high E string also down to a D, so once again we've got some D notes here that we can use as a reference, so... roughly that's a D now I think and then I would also next take the second string down to an A so we've got our A string here to use as a reference so just tune that B down to an A it's 
something like that. So now we've got D, A, D, G, A and D. Now it's just the G string we now need to uh, to sort out and that needs to go down a semitone to F sharp and we haven't actually got another string that we can use as a as a reference here. What you could perhaps do is play this F sharp note here at the fourth fret on the D string. And then lower the third string until it sounds like that. And then we should have our open D tuning. So we should have D, A, D, F sharp, A, and D. So that doesn't sound too bad to my ears, but what I might do, particularly if I'm recording, is always just check with a, an electronic tuner just to fine tune things and make sure that everything's absolutely perfect. Let's get into Vestapol or Vastapol then and it's a blues in D and we're going to need three basic chord shapes so I'm going to start by showing you those. The first chord shape is easy, it's just the six open strings, that's our open D chord, that's our one chord if we're playing a blues in D. For our four chord, our four chord is going to be D, E, F, G, it's going to be a G chord and this is the way we're going to be playing it. So I'm just pressing down at the second fret on the fifth string, got an open fourth string, first fret on the third string and then second fret on the second string. So we have that kind of sound. I'm not playing the sixth string here. That's our four chord. That's a G chord. Uh, if you want to be pedantic, I suppose it's a, a G with a B in, in the bass, but that's serving as our four chord in this piece. Now the five chord in the key of D is going to be A or A7 and the voicing that we're going to be using today is this one. So we have an open fifth string and we've got second fret on the D, first fret on the uh, third string and then we've got open second string, second fret on the top string. So, so that's our A7 chord. Again, being, being pedantic there's no C sharp in there so there's no third but it's, it's functioning as an A7 chord in this piece. So those are really the three chord shapes you need to think about in this piece. So let's get into the details of exactly how we play this piece then. And what we've got here is a 20 bar form and at the start of this video I just played three verses of the same form and I threw in a few different variations but I'm going to take you through the basic form to start with. And let's kick off with the first four bars and that goes like this. The key thing to remember for all of this piece is that it's an alternating bass finger style piece so the thumb is always going to be rocking back and forth between a pair of bass notes on beats one, two, three and four of every bar. So on the D chord the thumb is going to be going between the sixth string and the fourth string and you just want to try and keep that really steady throughout the piece because that's what's going to hold it all together. And once you've got that bass note going, those bass notes going then you can start adding in the melody line and the melody line is really pretty simple it's all based on this slide from the second fret to the fourth fret on the top string so and we've got a few little variations on that uh, open top string there and sometimes we're coming over onto the second string and just doing a, a hammer on from the open second string the second fret I think I sometimes just pull off again to the open string so the melody is all variations on that kind of idea and I think the best place to start would just be trying this so on beat one we're pinching the two outside strings and then we're sliding up to the fourth fret as the thumb hits on the fourth string. So it's sliding into the fourth fret on beat two. It's one, two, three, four. And to start with, just getting the hang of that would be worthwhile, I think. Just play that over and over until you're feeling comfortable and you've got the coordination together. And that actually makes up the first and second bars of this piece. So we've got. Then we've got a slight variation. So 
So in bar three we've got the slide, then we've got an open top string, then we're moving to the B string for this little hammer on and, and pull off move. Like that. You can just hammer on or you can hammer on and pull off. I think I like that sound of that pull off in there personally. So, so the rhythm is a little bit trickier here. We're pinching those two notes on beat one. We're sliding a bit more quickly. So it's one and two and the end of two we've got that open top string one and two and three we're playing the bass note and then we've got and four and so we've got the open B string and we're hammering down to the second fret at the same time as our thumb hits on the fourth string and if you're doing the pull off that happens on the end of four so one and two and three and four and and then bar four is the same as the first two bars so if I put all of that together and other things to think about I usually use a little bit of palm muting when I'm playing this on the bass notes that just controls the bass and stops it getting too boomy. As far as which fingers you use to play the melody notes that's really up to you there aren't really any rules here. Some people like to allocate the first finger to the third string, the middle finger to the second string and the ring finger to the top string. Um, I quite often find that I'm using my uh, first finger on the second string and my middle finger on the, the top string and, and not using my ring finger much at all unless absolutely necessary. So really it's up to you how you do this. I'd suggest you just play around and see what feels comfortable. Now we've got the first four bars. Second four bars are really very similar but we've got this slight variation. So it's getting a little bit busier here and all we're doing is we're playing bar three over and over. We've already learned this. Just playing that three times. And then we're playing the two outside strings. Then we're walking up into the four chord and that's just an open fifth string, first fret on the fifth string and then that leads us up to the G chord. So if you hold down that G chord shape, the pattern that I'm using the first time I play the four chord is this. That's a fairly standard finger style pattern I think. Once again the thumb is just alternating between the bass notes. This time it's going from the fifth to the fourth strings. And then I'm adding in some melody notes. So we've got... That's the first bar so I'm playing on beat two. One, two. I'm playing the open top string. One, two, three and four and I'm adding a little syncopated note on the and of three and playing the second string. And then in the second bar I'm pinching strings five and one to start with. I've got the second string, bass note, open top string, bass note, second string, and then another bass note. So it's a two bar pattern here. Then we're back to the one chord. And that's much the same as we've had before, the two outside strings. And then that little hammer on and pull off move. And the slide. We're going back to the G chord, back to the four chord, we'll do the same thing. Back to the D. So that's the entire first verse. Let me just put all of that together for you slowly.
So I suggest you get really comfortable with that basic form first and then when you're ready you can throw in some variations and this is what I did at the start of this video. I played through the form three times and in the second and third verses I did a few different things. Now the first thing I did, instead of playing that melody in the first eight bars, I went a little bit higher up the neck and I played this bluesy kind of lick. And you can hear this really clearly on the Stefan Grossman version of this tune and this is very similar to a lot of the stuff that John Fahey does as well. So the, the idea is this, we've still got the alternating bass going between the sixth and the fourth strings and the little bluesy lick is this. So we've got a pull off from nine to seven on the top string and we've got a little bend at the eighth fret on the second string, just pushing that slightly sharp. And then I've got an open top string. And if we fit that together with the bass notes, uh, we're pinching the outside strings on the first beat and pulling off. Then we've got the open fourth string. Then we're playing the second string with the bend. We've got a low bass note. Then we've got open top string and the fourth string bass note. Just repeating that twice. And a third time, there's a slight variation. So instead of the open top string, I've got the seventh fret on the top string. And then we repeat that again. I just varied the rhythm slightly there so I was just pinching all of the notes together rather than having the syncopation. Uh, then we're walking up once again to the four chord and there's another variation you can try here that sounds really nice. So we're holding down that four chord shape but then we're just lifting up the third finger and hammering down to the second fret on the second string. And the, the, the synchronization is a little bit tricky here. We've got the bass note, then we've got the open B string, and then we're hammering down to the second fret at the same time as we, we strike the second bass note. One and two, and then we've got the open, uh, open top string. repeats and we come back to the D we do that again and then once again we're to the five chord I think I just find myself varying some of the picking hand patterns th throughout this piece. I think once you get more experienced with finger style that's something that comes quite easily. So that was how I played the second verse. Verse 3 was very similar. The one thing I did slightly differently is I went even higher up the neck on the first eight bars and did this kind of thing. So it's a kind of pentatonic melody here. We've got the 12th fret to the ninth fret on the top string and then 12 to 9 on the second string. So on, on beats 1 and 3, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we're back into that bluesy bending lick. So you can go, just go straight into the bend or you could go 
do it the same as in the second verse, completely up to you. Lots of variations and things you can play around with there. Um, then we're back into the into the uh, the four chord again. I think I played that the same as before. Uh, and do that round again. And one more thing that might be worth pointing out. I just came up with a little ending which went like this. So we're coming into this from the five chord. And then I did this. pairs of notes that I'm pinching with the thumb and, and a finger so I've got fourth fret on the fourth and the top strings moving that down to the second fret and then the open strings and then second fret on the fifth and second strings the two outside strings and then I've got a pull off from the second fret to the open fifth string little bend at the second fret on the sixth string low D and then why not throw in some harmonics at the twelfth fret to finish things off for those of you who are interested in the gear that I'm using today guitar wise it's my Martin and this is a Martin uh, just have a look Martin 0015M I did actually know that and it's a smaller sized body acoustic guitar I guess this is kind of a parlor sized guitar so perfect for this tune and it's made of mahogany I like the way it sounds like the way it looks because it's mahogany it's got a slightly darker sound than say a spruce topped acoustic guitar again works well for this kind of country blues finger style stuff so that's Vestapol for you. Good luck learning the tune and I think this one is certainly going to be a really nice addition to anybody's finger style repertoire uh, what I hope happens is that the more you play the tune, the more you'll be able to find ways of tweaking my arrangement and of making it your own. If you'd like to see the music and the tab to this one, it's going to be up on my Patreon page. And I actually think particularly with fingerstyle stuff, it's quite nice to be able to see the music and the tab because some of this stuff is quite hard to explain and it's hard to pick up the details from a video sometimes. So do check that out if you're interested. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye.